Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. I hope everyone is having a great weekend and today we have some updates to discuss in the world of jailbreaking related to both iOS 13 as well as iOS 12.4 and the A12 jailbreak. We're also going to talk about A13 and a potential jailbreak for those devices. So the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. All right, so let's go ahead and get straight into this. Of course, as usual, if you guys haven't bookmarked our jailbreak status checker page, definitely do so. It will be linked down below in the description. Very first link. Basically, it just tells you whether or not a jailbreak is released and all updates surrounding it. And of course, it will contain download links as soon as a jailbreak utility is made available. Okay, so to start off, let's look at a few tweets from Will Stravich, AKA Chronic of the Quantum Chronic dev team. One of the greats responsible for releasing Green Poison and Absinthe. As some of you may already know, he did announce that he has interest in returning to the jailbreak scene. Details on that in your cards, as well as down below in the description. Semi-recently, he tweeted out in response to a few people on Twitter, quote, I know what we are working on, but unsure how others are progressing. And I know we are taking our time, not rushing. I would advise against getting too excited for any kind of imminent, stable release. So this is still exciting. I mean, even though Chronic says to not get too excited and don't get your hopes up for any sort of quote, imminent stable release, he is still working on something, which in my opinion is reason enough to get excited. Anytime one of the greats returns to the jailbreak scene, it is cause for celebration. He's working on something related to the checkmate exploit, which will provide a permanent jailbreak for devices like the iPhone 10 and lower rocking an A11 CPU or again lower. And those devices will be jailbroken for life thanks to Checkmate. More details on that down below in the description if you have no clue what I'm talking about. Definitely start there with part one. Again, it's all linked in the description. But this just builds on what we discussed the other day, saying that they are focused first and foremost on stability, which is what I like to see. I like to see when developers actually put time into creating something incredibly stable, similar to what Pwn has done with the iOS 12.4 jailbreak and what he's currently working on with the A12 update for that. Okay, so to follow this up, Chronic basically just reiterated that saying in response to someone else, quote, I think others will be first, honestly, which in my opinion, honestly, is just fine. I know whatever he puts out is going to be great, end of story. And as for why he's actually doing this, this Twitter thread I found semi-interesting from a couple days ago that I want to get into. He said, quote, super appreciative of offers like this. This is in response to offering to pay him or donate to him for releasing a checkmate based jailbreak, quote, but already have a great monetary incentive to do this. A jailbreak will help at Guardian iOS app immensely with the ability to dig deep into malware and privacy invading apps from an unprecedented low level. So if you guys haven't checked out the Guardian iOS app, I do recommend doing so. You can find them on Twitter, just at Guardian iOS app. You can see that right here. That's Chronic's official privacy app in the App Store. Definitely check it out. It's worth at least a look in my opinion. Finishing up the Chronic news, someone asked him if there's a way to basically bypass jailbreak detection efficiently. And he said, quote, I think yes, actually, it needs to be done in a smart way, but Checkmate helps make that so much easier. Because again, remember this is a boot ROM based jailbreak, so it's different than any of the jailbreaks we've had recently. So you can do more things like that. So in theory, he should be able to bypass jailbreak detection entirely. And maybe he'll be interested in working on that as well after he releases a tool, who knows? But just be sure to subscribe if you have yet to, because I'm going to keep you guys fully updated every single step of the way. And this will conclude our Checkmate news. Timestar creator of Future Restore said, quote, again, I will update Future Restore to make it an easy to use process. But for those who really can't wait, this is a great tutorial. He's referencing a guide highlighting how to actually downgrade back to iOS 10.3.3 using OTA blobs or over the air update blobs with 
an older device. So this does not include support for obviously newer devices, um, like the iPhone 10, for instance, can only go to iOS 11 anyway, but this is only for A7. So with that said, Timestar is going to push something out in the future to allow for easy downgrades on all devices. Again, this is thanks to Checkmate. We've discussed it a number of times because of the low level nature of this exploit. You can downgrade without actually having blob saved. It's absolutely fantastic. And it also means that you can't actually go back to a firmware without having the SCP compatible, which is fantastic news because for instance, right now, even if you have your blob saved, you could not downgrade back to iOS 12.4 because Apple has stopped signing iOS 12.4.1 and iOS 13's SCP is incompatible. So that basically is a lot of info right there, but just know that this means that you'll be able to downgrade to any firmware no matter what as long as your device was supported by that firmware and it's an iPhone 10 or lower compatible with Checkmate, you'll be able to go back. So that's some really awesome stuff. Now to one of the things that I find most exciting, Pwn to Own actually replied to someone on Twitter asking if they'd had a chance to take a look at A13 devices on iOS 13. This tweet kind of flew under the radar, but he said, quote, I believe my substitute bootstrapping stuff should work unchanged, but I haven't tested it. So this is fantastic. Pwn is definitely busy working on the iOS 12.4 jailbreak update for A12 devices, but after that, maybe he'll take a look at A13 and he believes that substitute could work, which of course is required to get tweaks to function properly. So that's some super exciting stuff, guys. Maybe we're going to see an A13 jailbreak and obviously an A12 jailbreak on iOS 13 at some point soon in the future after we get our first round of Checkmate jailbreak utilities. Don't forget, guys, that just because Checkmate doesn't include support for A12 and A13, that doesn't mean that those devices are left in the dark, actually far from it. I've said it a number of times and I'm probably going to keep saying it until people stop crying in the comment section that their devices aren't supported. A permanent boot ROM based jailbreak for lower devices will enable a full jailbreak and security research environment on the latest firmwares without actually having to use a zero day or non-public jailbreak because again, Every device that's supported is pwned for life. As long as Apple keeps supporting them, they're going to be able to jailbreak on the latest public firmware. And that is invaluable because it makes security research that much easier. Don't get me wrong, it's not easy at all, but it does mean that new kernel vulnerabilities could be discovered for A13 and A12 as a direct result of this jailbreak. I'm gonna keep saying that, guys, so just know that. And uh, we're going to finish this video up talking about a few updates from Pwn to Own. I didn't get into this too much because I was under the assumption it was going to be released at this point, but at any rate, he said, quote, I will release Uncover version 3.7.0 beta 2 as soon as I am done with writing a more solid fix for the issue that breaks system services. I already had a fix, but I want to perfect it all before the second beta. The second beta should hopefully be rock solid, which is what I love about Pwn. He pushes out updates that are perfect as far as a performance standpoint goes. Then he followed that up saying, quote, the issues that were already fixed for the upcoming beta include freezing, crashing, panicking, and other system instability issues on A12, camera, face ID, GPS, keychain, and a lot more issues are related to one core issue, which is what I'm working on a better fix for. So great stuff. Hopefully we're going to see that issued for A12 shortly and all of your issues with A12 devices, be it camera, GPS, whatever it happens to be, will be resolved with beta two. So be sure to stay tuned for more details on that. Again, I'm going to have you guys covered along the way. I'm also going to show you guys how to update your jailbreak once beta two drops. And uh, yeah, guys, this is a very exciting time in the world of jailbreaking. So just be sure to stick around for full coverage. And until next time, this is ACU signing out. And just stick around if you're new to the world of jailbreaking because we're going to play a portion of one of our recent top tweaks videos. These are things that you can install and do with your device once it is jailbroken. So here is a small sample of what you can expect once something like this drops for iOS 13. 
So first up, I don't know if you guys can see this, but up in the top right hand corner, I actually have my battery percentage right there instead of the battery icon. Now this is achieved entirely free with the tweak called battery percent X, but in this video, I'm actually using a paid tweak called Bazzy. And that tweak also adds this green indicator right at the top of my phone, also displaying my battery's percentage around the notch. All right, so for number two, this one is one of my favorites with Face ID devices. This one's called Fast Unlock X. So I'm gonna have to demo this with some B-roll, but basically when you have your device locked and you either tap to wake it or use the side button, whatever way, when you have Face ID enabled, when it normally recognizes your face, you'll have to swipe up from the bottom of the lock screen. But with this tweak enabled in contrast, when your face is recognized with Face ID, the phone will automatically take you to the home screen. No need to swipe. So it's just a quicker way to get into your phone without actually having to swipe up. You just look down at your phone and you're basically taken to the home screen. Now, while we're on the home screen and talking about this, one of my favorite tweaks is actually called Jumper. And it replaces these toggles at the bottom to whatever you want. It even allows you to set multiple icons down there at the bottom so you guys can have multiple shortcuts enabled if you guys want on both sides. So not only do I have my flashlight and camera, but I also have access to multiple of my applications. And it's just as easy as selecting the toggle and choosing what you want to go into. So that one is called Jumper.